Okay, so when it comes to overclocking the RDX 3090 Ti, the most interesting part is the memory. So uh, the memory which makes the card worse on LN2 than the standard RTX 3090. Apparently on air and water cooling the memory can do pretty well actually, but just on cold it seems to start like failing or dropping. So uh, I just found some results. So here's a result by Dan Carp in 3D Mark Times by Extreme at 2250 on the GPU. That's actually pretty high. I didn't see this kind of numbers on the standard 3090. So uh, it seems that the TI can reach much higher on the GPU even though it has like a larger GPU, so it has more cores, etc. Normally it should, be, uh, it should be harder to reach the same clock speeds as with like a smaller CPU. But anyways, 2250 on the GPU and memory 1478. So 1478, 1480 on the memory. So now if we look at uh, uh, like numbers here by, uh, let's look at Sense, Paul Royal. So uh, here we have memory looks to be the same, 1469. So that's quite in interesting. So 19,532, 1469. And if we uh, look, let's say, like my result with Paul Royal, I mean with 3090 in Paul Royal, so 2790, 1450. So that's quite interesting. So uh, no idea why uh, the memory is giving issues. On this card model on uh, cold as I haven't run this card at all at all on cold but this is definitely not beating the best 3090 so you can see there's Bizo Bizo run which is almost 500 points higher at 2895 1444 and this was uh, 2910 so this is a very weird uh, like uh, score difference this is higher with more uh, units inside the GPU, but worse. So this is very interesting, really. Could it be some like uh, memory performance issues as we have less chips, like uh, single-sided versus dual rank memory when it comes to computer RAM? No idea. So this is something people are trying to figure out because so far 3090 Ti has some very hard time beating uh, 3090 in uh, various like tests. So we should have, uh, I think it was 8K optimized where TI is now leading. So here, Ralph 3090 TI at 21, 2910, but less than 1400. So you can see much worse result on the memory on the Galax compared to EVGA. So uh, 1384, but still managed to beat Bizo Bizo, which was done at... Uh, 2835 1481. If Bizo ran his better card for this, I'm sure he would have won. And uh, the last, last one I want to show you is the uh, 1080p. So 18,967, 2865, 1375, versus Bizo Bizo, 100 points, 130 points higher at 2820, 1481. So that's, these are our targets, pretty much. When it comes to like Paul Royal, so 3D Mark Paul Royal, is there any like water run? So uh, water, 17,090, but this is definitely with like a good CPU. So I was doing something like this at Stark. So uh, we cannot definitely do this high without overclocking the CPU. So uh, 12900K is much faster for this test than uh, W3175X. But I'm only interested in the card like overclocking at the moment. So PCI Express X16 3.0. So remember, no Gen 4 at the moment. And uh, we can use classified.exe to overclock the card. So uh, here we have. So now the uh, thing is a little bit different. Actually, uh, I'm. Think, I think this is missing uh, the PEX VDD, so PC Express or PLL. We have the GPU voltage, memory voltage, switching frequency for both uh, GPU and memory, and uh, low line calibration and OCP. I think the uh, 
highest low line calibration settings, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, they will be overshooting this time around as well. So let's try uh, without uh, voltage first. So Paul Royal, and uh, I just want to make sure we have GPU-Z, and we do have. And now I want to, let's set like a mild GPU overclock first. And then let's try to push the memory at the same time. So we were running uh, 2085, 2100, I will put 75. I will put uh, fans to max, 75, and what happens if we put 1000? So now we would have 1438 on the memory. I think this will be just fine. I'm pretty sure this is fine. Let's try to push even higher. 1488, this might be a bit too high. I will, uh, let's do a compromise at 1300 and let's try to run this. 2175, so uh, this might be on the edge already. So this was only plus 75. Is it possible? No damn idea. So uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm trying to run Paul Royal. So see what happens. 65, VRM 29, 31. But sometimes it can be hard to overclock these because it might start to throttle and so on. So 32. So quite cool. If the uh, FPS is worse, we know it's not going correctly. 76. 115, so it's definitely going higher. Seems to be running. Yeah, it seems fine. But yeah, I don't want to push this too much. GPU only 31 degrees Celsius, and this is a recycled cooler from 3090, VRM4, 39, 40. So I'll let this to pass and let's look at the figures once it finishes. I bet the score will be close to 16,000, maybe 16,000 or 15, uh, at least 15,500. Call was 2160, 2135, I think we saw like 2135. 1475 so yeah 15,537 if we used the mainstream platform with decent CPU and etc etc would have been well over 16,000 for sure so a uh, pretty good memory if you ask me 2160 and uh, let's look at the power power 5 was 29 41 30 28 memory 38 48 50 okay and do we have power reading pcs board power draw was maximum 472 watts so 450 watt tdp pretty close i guess so now we can try to push it So this would be 2190, close to 2200. We can, uh, let's put a bit higher so that we can get 2200. 2205. And here's the uh, temperature probe locations once again. So now we would have 1500 on the memory, 2200 on the GPU. But I think this will fail now. I think the VRM is fine. So uh, it didn't even feel a hot when touching it. But again, I wouldn't push like voltages, switching frequencies like uh, a madman without a proper heatsink on the VRM. At least if you don't have a very strong fan towards that naked VRM like what I, what I have at the moment. But yeah, it seems to be working just fine. Okay, so running again. So far seems to be running just fine. 76 FPS. I want to see the highest figure. 116, 117. So, uh, Seems to be running quite fine. So 1500 on the memory, remember. Only 30 degrees on the, cell, on the GPU and 38 on the highest VRM. So pretty awesome if you ask me. 
15,719 at 2190, pretty all around, 1500 on the memory. So GPU temperature has been much higher than what that OLED display is giving us. So 56 degrees, so that's definitely not correct what we saw. So we had 56 degrees, the hotspot, I don't know what this hotspot is, and the memory temperature is quite weird. And uh, do we have uh, GPU 2 was 45? So that might have some uh, inaccurate reading. So actually, let's put GPU temperature away and uh, GPU die temp. Usually, the GPU die temp is good. Okay, so now I want to do 140. Push the GPU to 235. Okay, let's hope it passes right now. 70 FPS. Yep. So now it passed. So 2205, 2190, something like this. 21, it actually dropped to 2175 along the way. 1525 on the memory. And 15816. Okay, interesting. Could have been either. So. Uh, I think this measurement doesn't, or this uh, thing doesn't work over here, so we can... This will be 5037. I think this will crash if we uh, just go too high on them. Okay, so now as we uh, know roughly what we can do, so uh, maximum memory will be at 1525 to 1540 without any voltage or similar increase so what we could do so we can put like low line level five and here we might put let's say like 1.18 800 voltage is now set at 1.18 volts come back down a little bit 1.15 1.35 on the memory, so uh, poor Royal, so we can put was it 1600 and 140. Just 18. Okay, so not possible. Okay, it did pass now, so like two to, oh, it starts to drop the clock when it gets very warm, so uh, 67 degrees Celsius, so I pushed the uh, voltage by quite a bit, so uh, yeah, no, uh, not so special uh, result, I think, but we can at least save this anyways, so 15,840 over 1.3 volts with uh, load line calibration level 5, I think that was it. Fifteen eight four. Okay, so this seems to be the uh, maximum, so uh, like uh, what could be like realistic on air or water cooling. So touching the voltages yields nearly nothing on uh, the stock cooling so uh, yes might be able to squeeze a tiny bit more on the uh, core but then often what happens is that when you really push the core you need to drop the memory a little bit so the 1525 which i passed earlier is very on the edge now on few attempts it uh, either crashes upon setting it or like when it enters the benchmark or somewhere during the benchmark, but 15.12 is uh, pretty uh, solid. So 15.12 and uh, GPU clock between 2.205 and 2.35. Uh, like I think it should be 2.235 or 2.220 uh, idle. So I set plus 130 on the uh, GPU clock on precision X1. So this will uh, this will be pretty much it, so let's save this. This would be well over 16,000 if we had a better like uh, CPU, etc. So uh, could be very close to like 16,000, 16 and 17,000, somewhere around that mark. Like someone got 
17,000 even with mainstream CP running on water, I think. But anyway, so this is pretty much it. So, highest score was 15,840 with high voltage on the GPU, and, uh, and this is all with stock voltage. So, uh, I tried both uh, increasing and lowering the memory voltage, and it didn't really yield much. Surprisingly, lowering the memory voltage didn't actually uh, drop the stability like dramatically. So in some cases it could have been like a good thing to drop the memory voltage by a tiny bit, but overall no big difference whatsoever. So uh, this is pretty much it. So uh, no big gains from overclocking the uh, 3090 Ti Kimpin. I think goes a tiny bit higher than standard 3090, but overall pretty much the same. But very good memory all, all around. I think I, uh, I really haven't seen uh, any uh, over 1500 on the memory this far. Board power was uh, 480 watts almost maximum. And when I set the uh, memory or the GPU voltage to 1.27 or 1.28, which went over 1.3 under load, it went up to like 670 watts. So the power consumption goes through the roof if you start to touch the uh, GPU voltage like uh, in uh, large amounts. But yeah, hopefully you like to see these uh, tests on uh, some of the better models among the RTX 3090 Ti cards. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, check out my Patreon page as well if you want to support my work. And thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one.